body is definitely feeling being pregnant yeah. today. Okay. My hips are really sore. Like at the moment, I don't know what's happening. I think the baby's coming up, so my ribs by the end of the day are really, really sore. Okay. Um, and then my back is really sore. So lower ribs, back is really yeah. sore. What's happening with the leg? Um, well, it's still definitely sore. Mm -hmm. Um, but my hips, I don't know, maybe I should have taken magnesium last night, I didn't take magnesium mm -hmm. last night, but my hips, like, through the night and when I woke up this morning were really sore. More right than left or equally? Equally, just yeah. Dull, annoying yeah. pain. And just explain to me one more time for the purpose of the camera, um, you have an injury to the lower leg, right? Lots of scar tissue. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, and it's just really, it just feels tight down there. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's have you stand up. Huh? So our body is like a system of pipes, circulation in and out. So if she has an injury down here with a lot of scar tissue, because of the pregnancy, in this area, in her inguinal area, we have a femoral artery, vein, nerves, lymph nodes, so much goodness in anatomy supplying the leg. So what happens with the baby is it kind of cuts off the circulation a little bit, right? Impeding flow in and out through the leg. So if we have scar tissue down here, all of this becomes extra tight. The ankles may swell and it may put extra pressure on that already vulnerable um, tissue. So we have to work through the soft tissue to drain the leg to the best of um, our ability. So let's turn and let's look at your spine now. Okay. So because of baby, her hips are a little bit forward, sort of compressing sacroiliac joint. We have a little bit of a side bend to the left. How are the shoulders and the neck? Yeah, last night they were really sore, like everything was really sore. Everything was really sore. Are you, um, when you're working, are you sitting or standing? Sitting. Yeah. Okay. And yesterday I, I like, barely got up to even pee, so. Yeah, because this seems really rounded right now, right? So we have a little bit of forward neck posture going on. That we have to be mindful of. And I want to look at her too, him, and make sure that he's somewhat symmetrical see how he's laying. I don't do any spinning of babies, but by creating a sound structure and house for him, sets up his environment to thrive. So what we're going to do, we had a side bend to the left. The left pelvis is um, a little bit forward, so we want to line up the pelvis um, as symmetrically as possible for smooth delivery of baby. So, because the right pelvis is a little bit forward, I'm using her leg as a lever to bring her pelvis posterior. A little muscle energy, push your knee into me, and relax, good. Again, her lower back is in a little bit of extension because baby is pulling her forward, so we just want to open up these spinal segments a little bit. Push gently down and relax. Now I like to work into the hip joint because when we're pregnant, as I said, her weight is shifted forward. As it shifts forward, glutes, everything is tightened, so we really kind of want to loosen that up. But there's a fine line between doing too much and too little because I don't want to loosen it completely because she needs the muscle to be somewhat taut to support her pelvis, right? She's carrying extra weight. So we don't want to foam roll this whole thing and take away the support system for her, for her pelvis and her hips. So it's really a fine line that we're kind of working with here. Gently bring your knee up to the ceiling and relax, good. 
go again because her weight is a little bit forward in the pelvis, upper body is slouched down, these ribs are compressed at the bottom. So we want to take her upper body, elevate it using her arms as a lever, nice and relaxed for me. Good. Going through each one, so I'm following her pattern of being slouched forward with her arm and opening it up. Opening it up. Breathe for me into the right rib cage and out. Good. My thumb is staying there, increasing pressure and heat to release the muscle. So the pituitary gland releases oxytocin through the venous system. It comes down through your jugular vein and then enters the circulation down to the breast tissue to allow for um, milk let down. So when you're closed down or there's a lot of tissue tension in the shoulders and neck, we have um, impedance of the delivery of those hormones. The better posture that you have, the better the likelihood of uh, more efficient breastfeeding if that's what one chooses. We really want to try our best to reduce forward neck posture as I mentioned before in case she chooses to breastfeed for the delivery of oxytocin. So fluid like straight lines so if her head is um, pitched forward what that does is that puts a kink in the pipe and the oxytocin, which is released from the pituitary gland, down through the venous system, the jugular vein, which passes underneath the angle of the mandible, underneath the SEM. If she has forward neck posture, it occludes that delivery of hormones. So we want to make sure that her head is resting nicely on her shoulders. The vagus, like, I don't know, maybe it's a hot thing, something, but like, I always remember being like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, relax. So we're going to release the OA, which is a little bit extended in her. Release the suboccipital muscles that are keeping her into extension. So drainage always precedes treatment, so I'm going to try and just make sure and move fluid first before any adjustments are made. Milk in the SEM, milk in the jugular vein, just creating some pressure behind the angle of the mandible. Push your jaw forward for me and relax. Good. So the jugular vein passes underneath here, so any type of restriction in the jaw, any tightness can occlude this. So I want to make space, push your jaw forward, open it up, gently push back against my fingers, now forward again, and relax, good. Clasp your hands for me.